All right, so you may know about the Fibonacci sequence. where the term in the sequence, the next term in the sequence is the sum of the previous two terms of the sequence. And you may know about the golden ratio defined by A is to B as A plus B is to A phi when H of a lot cooler than pi. And you may even know the relationship between the two that the limit of consecutive terms of the Fibonacci sequence is equal to the golden ratio. What's baffled me until fairly recently is the necessity of this relationship. Where does that relationship come from? Why is it true? How are these two related? I'm going to use a technique here called generating functions and uh, as an aside, let me recommend a really good book on the subject. Right. <clears throat> First, uh, I'm going to solve for phi. So phi is equal to, breaking this fraction up, we have a over a is 1. b over a is the reciprocal of phi, 1 over phi, which, incidentally, uh, suggests an interesting way to write phi. Phi is equal to 1 plus 1 over phi, but phi is equal to 1 plus 1 over phi is equal to 1 plus 1, and so on and so forth. Continued fraction, very nice. All right, but if we multiply both sides by phi, here we get phi squared is phi plus 1. That's quadratic. We can solve quadratics. Quadratic formula. There we go. Now I'm going to call the first one phi plus with the plus, and the second one phi minus. Let me point out something very interesting phi plus times phi minus 1 plus 5 over 2 times 1 minus 5 over 2 1 negative root 5 positive root 5 they cancel negative 5 1 minus 5 is negative 4 over 4 negative 4 over 4 is negative 1 so phi plus and phi minus are negative reciprocals of each other. That will be useful later. Okay, so we talked a little, little bit about uh, the golden ratio. Let's go back to the Fibonacci sequence and start this method of generating functions. Well, what is a generating function? A generating function is an infinite polynomial where the coefficients are the terms of sequence. All right. And let me write down the base terms f0, 0, zero f1, one, 1. So the Fibonacci sequence is 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and so forth. So this generating function is 0 plus x plus x squared plus 2x cubed and so forth. Now let's reach up and get this uh, recurrence relation. And what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by an arbitrary power of x and then sum.
There we go. You can see that this first term on the right hand side, since f0 is 0, the first term on the left hand side is the generating function. And here, very close to the generating function, all we have to do is factor out one of these x's. On the left hand side, the situation is a little bit trickier. We can multiply by 1 in a sneaky way, multiply it by x over x, take the numerator inside, distribute it over the sum, and the x to the n becomes x to the n plus 1, matching up these indices, that's very nice. But then, you start with x squared f2. So the left hand side, this part will be anyway, once we've distributed in the numerator x here, will be the generating function with this first term subtracted off. So we get 1 over x a minus x. There we go. Now we can solve for a. a equals that will be negative x squared plus x minus 1. I invite you to check that. This denominator is a quadratic. If we find its roots, we can factor. So let's do that. Ah, and this is the negative of the two solutions to the quadratic which defines the golden ratio. Okay. Let's use these. And let's use the technique of partial fractions to write this one fraction with a quadratic denominator as the sum of two fractions with uh, constant numerators and linear denominators. I love this technique. Now, since this is an identity, these two things should be identically equal. They should be equal for every x, and so we're free to pick any x to find uh, the values of the constants a and b. So let's suppose x is equal to negative v minus. That would imply that negative x is positive v minus. Multiply both sides. These will cancel. It's a zero term. And we get V plus minus V minus B. Mm -hmm. So B Alright, and incidentally, V plus minus V minus is equal to root 5, 1 half minus 1 half, root 5 over 2 plus root 5 over 2.
All right. If we let x be negative phi plus, this implies that phi plus is equal to phi minus minus phi plus a, which means a is phi plus over uh, negative root 5. There we go. Pull out that root 5. Put the positive term first. There we go. What I would like is to um, put ones on top of here, get ones on top of here, and to have a positive one here. So, easy way to do that would be to pull phi minus out uh, of the denominators and cancel it with the numerators. So let's do that. Okay, that becomes a 1. This becomes 1 over v minus x. Alright, so 1, 1 plus 1 over v plus x, but up here we showed that phi plus and phi minus are negative reciprocals of each other, which means And we're almost there. Does the do these suggest anything to you? Well, if you've worked with series a lot, it might. Take, for example, a geometric series. One plus r plus r squared plus r cubed plus and so on. Let's call the sum of that, assuming it has one s. Consider r times s. r plus r squared plus r to the third. And so on. Let's subtract the two. Right? So, s just like that. Well this looks like that. This is a series with common ratio phi plus x. So our generating function can again be rewritten. So sum There. And now, recall what the generating function is. It's an infinite polynomial whose coefficients are the terms of the sequence. So if we can find the nth uh, coefficient, we found the nth Fibonacci number.
and there it is. The nth Fibonacci number is 1 over root 5 times phi plus to the n minus phi minus to the n. Right. Very nice little formula. Closed form solution for the nth Fibonacci number. All we have to do is plug in whatever n we want. If we want the 152nd Fibonacci number, plug in 157 into there, and we don't have to do all the uh, addition to get up to the whatever Fibonacci number we want. But now we can certainly see that the limit f n plus 1 is root 5's cancel Now, as n gets very large, both of these terms get very close to 0. 1 minus root 5 over 2 is um, between negative 1 and 0. So these get very small. And so the limit, nope, that's still a limit, is phi plus.